George Cavendish writer. George Cavendish, 1497 c. 1562, was an English writer, best known as the biographer of Cardinal Thomas Wolsey. His Thomas Wolsey, late Cardinal, his life and death is described by the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography as the most important single contemporary source for Wolsey's life, which also offers a detailed picture of early 16th century court life and of, oh, particularly the divorce proceedings against Catherine of Aragon. Family Cavendish was born in 1497, the elder son of Thomas Cavendish D. 1524, who was a senior financial official, the clerk of the pipe, in the court of Exchequer, and his wife, Alice Smith of Padbrook Hall, Suffolk. He was the great-grandson of Sir John Cavendish, from whom the Dukes of Devonshire and the Dukes of Newcastle inherited the family name of Cavendish. George was an English courtier and author and the brother of William Cavendish, the second husband of Bess of Hardwick. He was probably born at his father's manor of Cavendish, in Suffolk. Later the family resided in London, in the parish of St. Albans, Wood Street, where Thomas Cavendish died in 1524. Around this time, Cavendish married Marjorie Kemp, of Spain's Hall, an heiress, and the niece of Sir Thomas More. Career, Rur. Probably aided by his father's position at the Exchequer, in about 1522 Cavendish entered the service of Cardinal Wolsey as gentleman usher, and stayed in his service until Wolsey's death in 1530. His position required him personally to attend the Cardinal at all times, as well as responsibilities for the lavish entertainments that Wolsey enjoyed. During this time Cavendish was often separated from his wife, children and estates. Cavendish also knew in Bolin when she was first a debutante at Henry Roman VIII's court in 1522. He was adamant that she remained a virgin until her marriage, despite Catholic rumors to the contrary. However, although he attested to her sexual morals, he never forgave her for her hatred of Cardinal Wolsey or her animosity towards the Pope. Cavendish was wholly devoted to Wolsey's interests, and also he saw in this appointment an opportunity to gratify his master passion, a craving to see and be acquainted with strangers, in especial with men in honor and authority. He was faithful to his master in disgrace, and showed the courage of the loyal servitor. It is plain that he enjoyed Walsh's closest confidence to the end, for after the cardinal's death Cavendish was called before the Privy Council and closely examined as to Walsh's latest acts and words. He gave his evidence so clearly, and with so much natural dignity, that he won the applause of the hostile council, and the praise of being a just and diligent servant. He was not allowed to suffer in pocket by his fidelity to his master, but retired, as it would seem, a wealthy man to his estate of Glemsford, in West Suffolk, in 1530, having refused the offer of a position as gentleman usher from Henry Roman VIII. He was only thirty years of age, but his appetite for being acquainted with strange acts and persons was apparently sated, for we do not hear of his engaging in any more adventures. Writings and Influences It is likely that Cavendish had taken down notes of Wolsey's conversation and movements for many years past before his biography was composed. Between 1554 and 1558, he wrote it out in its final form. It was not, however, possible to publish it in the author's lifetime, but it was widely circulated in manuscript. Evidently one of these manuscripts fell into the hands of William Shakespeare, for that poet made use of it in his Henry Roman VIII and Samuel Weller Singer, even said that Shakespeare merely put Cavendish's language into verse. Thomas Wolsey, late Cardinal, his life and death, was first printed in 1641, in a garbled text, and under the, the genuine text, from contemporary manuscripts, was published in 1810. Singer published the first complete edition in 1825, The Life of Cardinal Wolsey, and Metrical Visions, from the original autograph manuscript. The metrical Visions were his tragic poems, laments in the voice of ill-fated contemporary figures like Lady Jane Grey, until the 19th century, it was believed that the book was the composition of George Cavendish's younger brother William, the owner of Chatsworth House, 
who also was attached to Walsey. Joseph Hunter proved this to be impossible, and definitely asserted the claim of George. The latter is believed to have died at Glemsford before July 1562. The intrinsic value of Cavendish's life of Cardinal Wolsey has long been perceived, for it is the sole authentic record of a multitude of events highly important in a particularly interesting section of the history of England. Its importance as a product of biographical literature was first emphasized by Mandel Creighton, who insisted on the claim of Cavendish to be recognized as the earliest of the great English biographers, and an individual writer of charm and originality. He writes with simplicity and vividness, rarely yielding to the rhetoric which governed the ordinary prose of his age. Fictional Portrayals George Cavendish appears as a minor character in Hilary Mantle's novel Wolf Hall, a fictional biography of Thomas Cromwell. Cavendish is portrayed as a devoted servant who genuinely admires Wolsey. In the novel, Cromwell describes him as a sensitive sort of man. Cavendish appears as a quiet and loyal servant in Frailty of Human Affairs, the first book in the Thomas Cromwell Queenmaker series by Caroline Angus. He is similarly portrayed in Cara Harrison's mystery novel, The Cardinal's Court, History Press, 2017.